Now, the fly I'm going to be tying, uh, now, the bully butt is a, a well known salmon fly. Normally, I would tie this uh, for Norway and Russia. Mainly Norway, I've tied this, and this is a pattern that uh, I tie a lot, uh, mainly on a double, though you can tie it on tubes as well. This one here is tied on the old Salar double uh, that you can't buy anymore in black. Uh, one of the better, better choices or close to it would be the you can get these the Magni double. This is a size 6. So, I mean, it's reasonably easy fly to tie. Tail is important. Right? I've used many materials over the years. Fluorofiber, uh, SLF hangs, which is quite popular, and then just basic wool. Now, it can be hard to get some of the colours, and the easiest and one of the most productive I've found is to be just basic wool, just a red wool. This is just a fluorescent red wool I bought out at uh, the local sewing shop. And all I do is brush it to open out the fibres, tie it in as a tail. It swims really well with the rest of the fly, nice and bright, and uh, doesn't overdo it as well. So, obviously, the hook choice I've got the Magni Double which is from Full and Mill, size 6. Now it's got a red sort of butt on it, uh, so what I'm going to do is use the Glow Bright Floss to get that and tie in the tag at the same time. So this is the number 4, which is a fluorescent red. And I'm just going to start short the head, wind down. Now for the, the tag, you could use like, this is an oval copper tinsel that I have. Normally I'd like to just use a copper wire, uh, if you can't get the oval, it's quite hard to get that, but I've got a few spools. Now what we do is take this down to say midway between the point of the hook and the barb, and then I'm going to form a tag winding down towards the bend four times, then bring the tinsel between the hooks, push it nice and tight, and then basically force this together underneath, as soon as you can, when you tie this in. Nice and tight. Now I'm going to cut this about the length of the body, which is about, see, there. So it's balanced. And then I'm going to form the butt section with the, the Globrite floss. Nice and tight. Now, to see what I normally do is get just an old toothbrush. And I just lightly brush the wool using the toothbrush. So that flattens it out. There we are. Now you can thin it out to suit your cell, to suit the size of the fly that you're tying. It could be one strand, two strands, or whatever. You can make it much finer, like there. So see, it's up to yourself how you want it. And then we can tie this in. I'm just going to brush it a wee bit more to get the shape I like. Don't tie it in unless you're happy. If you're not happy with the, the tying of your fly, you'll not fish it. If you think there's just a wee tad too much, you can always draw some of the fibre back. Which I'm doing in it. Length of the tail, again, it's up to yourself. You about the length of the hook. You've got to use some sort of measure, so they get... When you reduce the size of your fly... Now, if I go to a smaller size, and they have it's tail length, the length of the hook, it will reduce. So. Um, so we trim that, and then we work our way up, nice and tight. Now there's a yellow hackle at the back, now to help keep it nice and tidy. What I'm going to do, is give us a wee brush. I'm going to tie in the yellow thread so that I could, basically this will blend into the turns of the yellow hackle. So I'm going to tie over the top of the floss. I mean, that's a, a very thin floss, it's like a fine thread, rather than a floss, but we use it for a lot for tails. You could even use it for this, for tails if you want it. So we take our thread to the, the tail, and give ourselves like a cock hackle or so. The fibre length, again, I've tied them long, short, whatever. Brush again. And then we tie in the hackle. Now we can tie this in by the tip around the butt. This is just a Chinese cock hackle dyed yellow. 
The length of the fibre, as I say, I usually like it towards the end of the tail, so we can check the length, which is fine. Now I want the softer part, now I want the strong stem at the bottom in this case, so it's at, because it's at the back, I need a wee bit more strength sometimes. So we catch this in, now always wax your thread, come down about 2mm or so, trim this away. Now you can fold the hackle before you tie in, I always fold once I'm on. Just draw your fingers through, it's really easy. And nice, straight and tight turns, one turn in front of the other. Now you see the thicker, the stem is nice and thick. Uh, basically it gives you grip and supports the fibre up. And then we can tie this in, nice and tight. Here's about maybe three or four turns here. Just bringing this fibre together. Trim it at an angle so I've got some sort of taper. I'm making sure that I tie this in and then take it out. Keeping these waist ends underneath. You can turn the hook upside down if you can, if you want. You don't want the waist ends to roll around with the thread turns. Now, we change threads again, which sounds a bit crazy like, but going to the black thread now. So we start it at just about mill and a half from the eye, start to work our way down, remove the waste piece of the black and the yellow thread. And then I'm using a medium to a small copper wire. This will protect the body. And then we just work our way down. Right to the, the hackle, I'm just going to draw back these fibres a wee bit. Careful with the points of the hook. Nice and tight. See where we are. That's fine. I'm using a copper tinsel, in this case number 12, or a large. Tie that one top, the way up. They have tied many variants of this fly, this fly over the years. This is the main one that I've tied, or the one that I got asked for. So we make sure we get a nice straight turn at the back. And then we start to work our way up. Nice and tight. Crossbow thread, two or three turns, then we'll bring our rib up. Rib's important that it's basically nice and tight, so we rib the fly, rib the body, sorry. You're looking four to five turns. Five turns is a bit of the norm. Come underneath, make sure it's secure, put a nice bend into the wire, 90 degree bend, this will lock it, lock the turns in nice and tight. Wax on your thread and then bend and break away the wire. Best to do that. See how things are starting. Well, it's okay. Now, the wing of the fly can be practically in, uh, in, as long as it's black. Now, the version I've been tying, I use a, this is a black bear. You could use Arctic fox tail. You could use uh, Temple Dog here, which is very soft. I'll show you this. This is going to be quite popular, very mobile. It's got a nice taper in it, and you can see it's really soft. Uh, but the, the, this Black Bearer has been very popular with the, the guys I've tied this for. Take the, the wing length can be as long or short if you want. This is a big fly, so it's quite a long wing. So I'm going to trim this away. Make sure the ends are clean. So we just tie this straight on. Normally, sometimes I'll trim the ends of the the hair and cut into it, but because I'm tying on quite a long area here, because I'm going to put the hackle in front, I can tie this in really with a 
but there's a lot of room to tie in, it's never going to pull out, so you wax on your thread, take it thread up and come back. A quick look, see how it's sitting, looks okay. A wee bit of flash. Now, again, there's two or three flashes you can use. I'm, I'm just using the copper and it's just a plain flat flash or mobile as they would call it and then a crystal flash in red a strand of each now what I'm going to do is down either side the length of the wing so just basically catch it, I'm catching it on my side thread down, folding it back bringing these ends onto your side cut it full length of the wing it's ok now I've got a hen hackle dyed black, which I'm going to tie in by the tip. And line it up. Again, wax on my thread. Good side of the feather facing myself. Make sure it's nice and tight, tie it down. Length could be as long and short as you like. Um, this is probably gape length or gape width of the gape, just slightly longer. Depends on the style, the shape you want. I've tied them long, tied them short. So this is just a standard length. You're happy with the number of turns, in this case about three turns there. Put that, bring your thread through and onto the stem and put a 90 degree bend in and allow the thread to come onto the stem. Make sure it's secure. I'll show you. Basically, I'm, I'm not catching in these these fibres here and there. If you catch in these fibres, all you're doing is bulking up your head, and you're catching less of the hackle in. It's much more secure if you do that. You can then trim that away. If there's an odd fibre, you can tear them away or cut them away. Again, always good to a wee bit of wax on your thread. Gives you that extra grip and strength into your thread as well. Just tidy the head up. It's ready for our jungle cock. See how it looks. That's fine. Uh, two jungle cock eyes. I've got two in my desk here. Not too short. Reasonable length. There you go. Two eyes. Just going to position it the length I want. Just going to draw back the fibres I don't want. Then. And then we tie these in to make sure, looking from the top down, the same length. Come in nice and tight. Position the eyes. At this point, you can look down, just check they're sitting up or the way you like. Checking the length, and I'll turn there just to make sure. Slightly short on my side, so I'm just drawing it towards. It's fine. Again, a wee bit of wax on your thread. Once through is usually plenty. Draw these back. Fold them back, secure in the eyes, make sure they're never going to pull out. And then just tidy the head area at this point. Straight turns, keep the thread tight, you can then break these off. Sometimes they'll not break, so you'll need to cut them. And then what we can do is go straight in, quite finish. Throw your thread. The fibers there I don't like, so I'll trim them away. And there we are. And that's the burly butt, or one of the many versions, as I say. I've tied a few different versions of it. Uh, I would say this is probably one I've got asked most for. Now, this is super glue, it's the full amount super glue I'm using. Don't want to touch the feathers, just the head. It comes with the brush, so it's easy to apply. Just lightly all the way around. Take your time. Now, allow that to dry, which doesn't take long. And a couple of coats of varnish after that, and your fly is finished. It's solid, nice bright shiny head you'll have. And there we are. And that's the the bully butt tied on a double.